In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we're celebrating the feast of Saints Hippolytus and Cassian, both martyrs. But today I want to preach on a saint who's also on today, today's calendar, um, but is kind of eclipsed, and that's Saint Maximus the Confessor. He was sort of the very end of the Church Fathers. Now, if you look at church history, the big debates for the first 500 years was actually all Christological. That means focused on who Christ was. And as a few of you here probably know, Jesus Christ is one person. That's a divine person. And he has two natures. That's a human nature and a divine nature. And he has two wills, a human will and a divine will. And by the fourth century, this had to get, the first part had to get hammered out, that Jesus is a divine person. He's only one person. He's a divine person, the second person of the Trinity, the divine word, God the Son. And that had to be hammered out against Arius in the fourth century. A little bit after that, there was some debate on how many natures did Jesus have. This was shown to be two. He has a human nature and a divine nature. And finally... The final debate, or at least the final major debate in Christology, was how many wills did Jesus Christ have? And certain people said, well, he must have only had one will. Otherwise, that would have been a contradiction. They didn't use the word schizophrenic back then, but the enemies of orthodoxy basically said this would have been schizophrenic for him to have two different wills. Well, the big church council that finally hammered this out the right way is called Chalcedon, the Council of Chalcedon. And what this says is the human nature and the divine nature, actually this is on the natures, not the wills, but this, this ties in all together. The human nature and the divine nature of Jesus Christ existed without blending, without change, without division, and without separation. What does that mean? Without blending, that means when we think of the human nature of Jesus Christ and the divine nature, we can't blend those together, like literally in a blender, that they just get mixed together. We also can't think of them changing each other. The divine nature of Jesus Christ did not change the human nature of Jesus Christ. The human nature of Jesus Christ did not change the divine nature of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, this is the last two, if you want to remember a mnemonic, B, C, D, S. The human nature and the divine nature of Jesus exist without blending, change, division, or separation. So the last two, DS, we can't think of the human nature and the divine nature as existing divided from each other. They exist without division, and they also exist without separation. So BCDS, the human nature and the divine nature of Jesus exists without blending, change, division, and separation. Well, the great hero, I think following this council of this, was St. Maximus the Confessor. I describe him as a man with the brain of St. Thomas Aquinas, and the heart of St. Francis of Assisi. And what he tried to show was why it wasn't, again, without using these words, this is modern words, why it wasn't schizophrenic to understand Jesus had two wills. How is it that he had a divine will and a human will? And what he pointed to was Jesus in the garden when he says, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And what he wanted to show, it wasn't that Jesus in his human nature was opposed to God, and remember, he is God, so we couldn't say his human nature is opposed to him as God, but that because it is good that Jesus Christ be alive as a human, he had to feel a natural distaste of death. We don't want to die. We should want to live. And Jesus Christ in the garden felt that same thing. So there was never opposition to himself as the divine word, God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, but because it's good that we are alive, he actually had to make that act not as I will, but as thou wills. And so, what we have in this is St. Maximus the Confessor showing there was nothing schizophrenic in Jesus Christ, but that he was a divine person with two human natures and two human wills. But there were so many enemies of the church at this point that they took him out and they cut his tongue out. Now, he's a great hero. And what we need right now in this time of confusion is more saints who are able to think that clearly, but with those hearts of love like Maximus the Confessor had. In fact, one theologian believes he came to the understanding of the analogy of being, something we won't get into today at a daily mass, came to the analogy of being of St. Thomas Aquinas 600 years before Aquinas did. And if you look at his life, how he was a a Greek monk but very loyal to Rome, there's something of St. Francis of Assisi in his heart of just pure love, but just brilliance in his brain. 
So let us today pray that we have saints again who are theologians and theologians who be saints who can explain the mysteries of Christ, refute error, even if it means getting your tongue cut out, but have a heart of love like St. Francis of Assisi or today's great saint, St. Maximus the Confessor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.